featuring Eric Blakeney. He's a writer and a director, and he's been working in the TV industry and film business for quite a long time. And he's got some great, interesting stories. So check it out. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Glad to be here. <laughs> well, um, I know that you have been working in TV for a long time, and you've also worked on film. Mm -hmm. um, you were on 21 Jump Street as a writer for a while, right? I was a showrunner for a year and a half. Wow. Yeah. What was that like? That was a huge show. I remember at that time, like that was. Oh, that it was, was a big Fox deal. number one show, and uh, it was really grueling. Um, we they gave me the show when the right after uh, one of the big writer strikes, but they kept all the episodes, so we had no no prep time. So we were, it was absolutely insane. We were doing scripts in a matter of days, and then shooting them and doing another one, and. Uh, yeah, and then we had, you know, Johnny Depp, for some reason, thought he could go and be a movie star, so he was, you know, being a pain <laughs> How in the ass. presumptuous of him. <laughs> try, trying to get out of his deal. So, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was grueling, but we had a lot of fun, too. You know, we, uh, there were a lot of musicians on the show. I, before I was a writer, I was a musician. So, um, and Johnny, before he was an actor, was, uh, was a musician. So we, um, we, we did a lot of um, drinking and playing music. That seemed to be a regular part of, of the whole shebang. <laughs> so our rap parties were the all-time greatest. So you, you guys know? would go and jam together afterwards. Yeah, everybody did. Uh, uh, Holly Robinson's a really good singer, so she would she would do her thing. And uh, one producer was a drummer in some like I don't know like punk band from the '80s, and somebody. Yes, yeah, so we had like everybody could play virtually except wow. Rich, Richard Grieco couldn't, but he was a decent basketball player. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I know you did your show, uh, Gunshy, or your, your film, yeah. Gunshy, mm -hmm. which uh, was a really interesting and funny and cool sort of black comedy. It was, um, you know, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was a fabulous experience, and I loved directing. Um, but after you do the film, you're, you're thrown into a machine uh, that is bigger and badder than any, than any machine you could possibly imagine trying to navigate politically. And I completely failed at this. I mean, I couldn't get Disney behind my movie. And I couldn't, I, I couldn't find a way. I had no great ally there. And so the movie got dumped. And I, you know, I, I remember like years uh, previous, I, I, I was at a party and a director was whining that you know, he just directed this film, and you know, had some big stars in it, and it bombed. And it's like I couldn't, you know, they didn't, they didn't market my movie properly. It was so horrible, and this, and I'm, I'm sitting there going, "What a whiner! You just got a big budget movie made, you wrote and directed." And I was just thinking, I'm never gonna be like that. Cut to five, six years later, and I'm just running around at every party whining, they didn't market my movie. They just dumped it out there, and it's just like, it's, it's well, really. Well, they, they true. put it out, but they just didn't spend a lot of money on the marketing, right? Yeah which you've talked about before, where, you know, basically it got released, but then if people don't know enough about it, they don't, then they're not going to go see it, generally, which is a, a big deal when it comes to uh, a, f a feature film coming out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's huge. And um, there, was, there was a kind of weird problem. The, mo the movie tested well, really well, and got, got a lot of laughs. Um, it was actually funnier than I thought it was. It actually it was really you know, funny. Was like, and... Um, that threw them into a kind of marketing conundrum. And they were like, well, you know, we're already... So here was the problem that happened. We had a lot of money in pre-sales because we had Sandra Bullock and Liam Neeson. So the movie was in profit before I started shooting. And I know that at a corporate level, they made a decision, you know, we're in profit with this movie. It's got a lot of big names. It'll have a really long shelf life. If we put all this money into it and it, you know, just kind of middles out, we'll lose money on it. And at that middle out point, we then owe these big fees to Liam Neeson, Sandra Bullock, and Oliver Platt. He had they because they, they all did it for scale, and um, they just made they just made a, a financial That's decision. That's really cool that they did that. It was fabulous. It was it was really uh, wonderful and. Uh, um, Sandra Bullock was, you know, a, a great trooper, and she produced the film. She was a champion. But uh, we we were ta we were put into Disney, which was not the place. Uh, um, so that was Buena Vista, right? 
Yeah, Buena Vista. Was, yeah, they were they were uh, producing some films at that time. And uh, it was kind of amazing because we were in prep for the movie, but we didn't have a lead actor. And what happened was on a Monday, uh, the Disney came and said, if we don't have a lead actor by the end of the week, we're going to shut it down. So we had all this pressure. And we, were out to, we were out to Liam Neeson, and we got an answer on a Tuesday that Liam really likes this script. And he, he, you know, he's really, and we didn't offer him anything. And he was, he'd just done the Star Wars movie. His price was, was big. Whoa. And uh, so, but he's not sure. He's, he's going to Deauville on Friday. He's going to, in France, uh, to the festival. So I'm like, okay, I jumped on a plane. I took, I took the red eye. Um, they got me, a, they got me a, um, a hotel room where I got a 45 minute nap. And then I, I met Liam. And we just we just hit it off, and he he was like, well, he I'm, seems like a really nice guy. It was lovely. I mean, really, really. You know, everybody has to say that stars are wonderful. Yeah. When doing it. Oh yes, she was great. And most of them are nightmares. And he was spect <laughs> spectacular, mm -hmm. spectacular, and a, a, a true gentleman. But but what happened was, so we I go there, and we hit it off. We really, it was just going great. We just, and um, talked about how we'd make the movie, and I said I explained that up. You know, I was a musician, and I kind of we'd we'd do it kind of like 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 a band. We'd rehearse and find our voices, and he was concerned about what kind of voice he would use for it. So um, we hit it off. So I get on the plane. It's good. We say, okay, let's make this movie. Okay, um, I get back into town. I think this is a Wednesday. Yeah, it's a, and I find out that Steven Spielberg just called Liam and offered him $8 million to do this movie called The Haunting. And it shoots at the same time. Oh, no. I'm like, okay, we're, we're, we're dead. And we, in two days, they're going to shut us down. We don't have time to go to another actor. And um, God bless him. So we're offering Liam scale. Steven Spielberg has personally called and said, listen, I'm producing this film, and I, you know, we'll give you $8 million. Wow. And... Um, then uh, so it's Friday and where where everybody's like getting ready to go home, and we found out that Liam had Spielberg push that movie so he could do ours, and we're alive, and that must have was, been exhilarating. We all we all went to the Viper Room, which I'd never been to. <laughs> which is, oh, you know, ironic that it was owned by Johnny, and and uh, I I got extremely drunk and yes with everybody everybody were we're just all They're crammed so into excited. dancing with strangers and you just yeah yeah we stayed a lot it was it was quite an exhilarating feeling yeah wow yeah that's so cool i can't mm. believe he did that i mean that just shows what kind of a person he is you know it's oh no he was you know, he was he was fantastic and there, there were long difficult days and uh liam even when he was tired and cranky he was always a gentleman Everybody in on, in the crew was in love with him. Everybody, male, female, I, I was just like he was the greatest. Yeah, and, and Sandra worker. Bullock too. That must have been great working with her. Yeah, I mean it was more difficult because she was the producer. So there there were there were natural conflicts, and I'd I'd adapted a book for her, and as uh, we'd really hit it off, at, at, you know, as well. But there were things that were, were tough, strain the relationship. Yeah, dealing with the budget, and then you're mm -hmm. directing. Right. Is that the main conflict? The, probably, um, Disney was, no, the, the main conflict was that Disney were really difficult masters, and they were not making life easy for me as a first-time director. They were putting a lot of obstacles in my way, and I, I didn't really understand. I, I, I brought them this project with superstars, and you think you'd get some love for it, but I, I, I remember my first meeting um, at the Disney corporate room. And I sat down with all of their, you know, you, it's classic. It looks like a, like a movie set with, you know, the table as long as an aircraft carrier. And all their, all their corporate guys are there. And uh, at one point, the head of production, who's just been sitting there quietly, turns to me. And we're talking about how we're going to make the movie for $10 million And, you know, shooting in New York and L.A. And he goes, why do you get to live in the Napa Valley and make movies here? looked at him like that's a weird thing to say yeah i was like well you know because i'm a really good writer man and you know people let me do that stuff you know and he was like uh and i just didn't know i was out of my element with these people 
I yeah. didn't have, you really do, you either need to be like somebody like Warren Beatty just knows exactly how to manipulate these guys. He's just masterful. And I'm the opposite of Warren Beatty. I will, in a, in a corporate environment, I will always make the stupidest joke, an inappropriate moment. And I just didn't know how to get over with these Disney guys. And so that became a, a source of conflict with Sandra, who is brilliant i mean at, at at working with those people on her own films but she didn't star in this movie this was liam's movie she was she was the producer was and the, and and the she, girlfriend she you know? had the one role yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah so it was it, I, I was out of my element as 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 a director not in the directing what part. kind of a barrier does a studio give a production like that i mean other than the funding you have you have your funding but then you have what, you can't well, they say have this, somebody, you can't do this, you No, can't. they have somebody there watching the money. So I'm making this movie for $10 million, and I had a new line producer who was, who was proving to Disney that he would be a different... He was working for them the first time, and he was kind of showing them that he would get me under control. So things would happen like, I'd have a dolly shot planned. And he'd know that, and so, that's, so you got to put a little more time into the dolly shot. And I would show up, and there'd be no dolly track on the on the camera truck. And he'd cr he'd cut it out or something. He'd have somebody take it off the camera truck on the day I'd planned, um, you know, my dolly shoot. And I was, and I, you know, it became a, a very hard thing to to work with and figure out because uh, I was being sabotaged, and that made a tension between Sandra and myself because it's like. Hey man, you're supposed to be making sure this shit doesn't happen. And oops, sorry, I shouldn't oops. have said shit. Okay. Um, hey. And um, so uh, you know that was that was a, a really hard thing you know to deal with because I I'd seen the dolly track on the truck all week. So I, oh, how did that? But it, it decided it didn't want to be on the truck. It'd been living there for three weeks on the truck, on the camera truck. So um, in spite of all that, directing was the, I, I, I don't think I'd ever enjoyed my career as much as when I was with the actors and all the creative people and the crew on the set. It was, I, 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 I was sitting there just, I, I said, to go, to go to myself, why didn't you do this sooner? Why, why did you, why didn't you stay you know, there in your room writing script after script and editing rooms and going to Canada? This is the best, you know, just... And it was kind of amazing because uh, being in television, I thought actors were only supposed to give you a difficult time. And uh, because I was a showrunner, I didn't get to work with them. I was just the, you know, the jerk sending pages that they hated or, you know, making their schedule difficult. And when I got onto the set, I was like, are you going to be able to deal with these guys? And it was just, it was just like magical. And was, even even when an actor was being difficult, I loved it. When Oliver Platt came down, I, I just love Ollie. And Ollie was, you know, didn't do what he was. I, Liam Liam was just knew all his lines, knew every. There were there were a couple of actors who were just like that. And uh, Liam, anything I, I wanted another take. It was like Eric, could you get? And he made me promise him that I would give him as many takes as he needed. So I, you know, that was part of our compact. But, so Oliver Platt shows up because uh, uh, he was. Uh, he was shooting a movie before that, so he came out like a week late. So we didn't have any time to rehearse or get any kind of rapport. And um, the first time he gets to the set, he's you know, he doesn't like the blocking that I'd figured out, you know. And and, and he's uh, he's reblocking. And he's, my first AD is like uh, he's leaning into me, going, "This is a train wreck. This is a train wreck." Because it was a very ambitious uh, shoot, so it really required me making my days. Mm. I was like, "No, no, no, no," you know. Let's... How many days did you have for that budget, by the way? We shot, we shot forty days. Whoa! Yeah, we, you know, that 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 line producer who was making my life hell was really efficient. That's so good. besides dumping on him for being a monster, he was also knew how to how to get value for our buck, you know. So, um, so Ali shows up and he's he's just, you know, trying to work it, and then he can't remember any of his lines, and and. So he's like, hey, 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 Eric, Eric, read the line with me. Read the line with me. So I'm reading the lines with him, and he's just so damn charming. He's like, Eric, you read those lines. Great. Why don't you come and do the scene with us? You know? I was like, no, Ali, I, I don't really know, think I can do that. I was like, oh. And he, he had to feel it. He worked completely differently uh, from Liam, but they had 
the love story is really Oliver and, and, and Liam, and they had such amazing chemistry, and we laughed nonstop. We actually got the work done, but everybody, this is, that's kind of like wonderful little comedy set. We were just all laughing and having the time of our lives, and everybody, the, 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 uh, there were ca different camps, so the camp that were there to make my life hell, they, they weren't part of it. But the rest of the crew uh, and, and, you know, all the camera guys, all the, all the, the, the down and dirty crew people and the actors, we were, we were just like our own little group. We all had our own little sayings. It's, you know, uh, when, we, uh, when we were finished uh, with a setup, you know, it, the, the language became, the kids are happy. And that meant we were moving on, you know, and it was just like, you know, it was all uh, uh, magnificent. So, oops. what a great experience! Yeah, it was. It really was. In 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 the end of the uh, of the whole thing, I was really glad to have done it. And uh, and the thing is, it's a really good movie, up. you guys. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. Gun shy, and um, and I'll just put a little insert in there for you guys. Cool. I've done this before, and uh, I just want you to know, I'm not into searching for man or child or finding out about my disappointment in my mother. Mommy, mommy. Go ahead and wipe your eyes. Undercover police officer Charlie Mayo is about to take on the last assignment of his career. Tonight, you're busting a mafia assassin. Oh, the guy's the Jeffrey Dahmer of Hitman. I'm sick of being a cliche. I need some cash so I can get out of this city. Get some movie lifestyle. And he's looking to relieve a little stress. I'm going to give you a stronger prescription. Only take one of these an hour before the meeting. You don't want to pass out. Let's get this party rolling. Uh, bring some crystal. I'm very good at reading what's in a person's eyes. What do they say? They say you're sleepy. Maybe you've got that weird sleeping disease. Narco sleepy. But all he really needs is a little human contact. Take it easy. So where are you from? Ireland. Ireland. Top of the morning to you. Oh. <laughs> Put your hand on the table. I won't say it again. Show the paper. Let the neighbor go. Sports page here. Yeah. All I really want to talk about is this amazing woman I met. What do you say, handsome? I think somebody up there likes me. She's great. She took me out on a date last night, and I don't know, for the first time in months. <laughs> I had fun. Liam Neeson. Hello. This one. Hello? Oliver Platt. I want you to get control of that anger. Ready, go! <laughs> and Sandra Bullock. <laughs> you think I'm just a nut? Yep. Ah, oh, but am I an attractive nut? Extremely. Who is she? Who is your meter? Does she know what you do? Uh, no, no. But I'm thinking of telling her. Gun shy. <laughs> no, no! Oh, boy. Okay, good. Well, I know that you have a new feature film that you have been working on uh, developing and getting funding, and it's going to be rolling forward pretty soon. And I think the name changed. What is it called now? French Twist. French Twist. Yeah. And it used to be called the Con Job, right? Yeah, the Can Job. Can uh, Job. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. What uh, do you say, Con or Can? I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> it's, it's, they say Can, mm -hmm. but that's kind of, but it is a Con Job. Yeah. Um, well, we're, ho you know, again, we're in the middle of that grueling funding chore. Yeah. And, uh, Which takes years. Um, yeah, yeah. And I know you do a lot of writing on the side for people as well, and that's kind mm. of like your bread and butter. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited for the, new, for the movie, and, um, and also I wanted to mention that you, I understand, are picked up for, to direct a TV series as well. They wanted to do a contemporary kind of cop show with me in Ireland, and oh, um, a cop and, show. Well, it's 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 um it's actually a sh the, the show it's it's a crime show uh, about uh, two cops who aren't uh, doing well, an American and an Irish cop, and they are they decide to create their own snitch into a crime lord, and and they're they're so they're helping this criminal to become a big criminal, and they're they're helping him to take down his competitors which in turn helps them in the police force. So there, there's a lot of, there's, there's kind of some of that shield kind of stuff, but what it's really about is the, 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 the terrible complications between males and females, the, 
the 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 lead guy is in a really really unhappy marriage with somebody he used to, he, he's always been madly in love with and all of the all of the life has you know, and the the good stuff has left and and um, my two heroes uh, both suffer being um, being in bad relationships with women and my bad guys have got great relationships with women so there's it's it's all about these dynamics about what happens between men and women and. Uh, the, the, the script was, it was actually really hard to write because, you know, I, I had to, to go into like some, some dark relationship kind of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so the, the, the best, the, the, the absolute queen of the script is, is the number two bad guy's wife. And she is, they have an awesome, awesome marriage. And while our heroes are trying to destroy them, you're you you're you're going to be rooting for them a lot. So we're we're quite we're we're excited about hopefully you know getting getting this off the ground and doing it. And we have a really really um, impossible end to the pilot, and we're not sure if we're going to get away with it. Well, that's really um, going to be exciting, I think, for you to do another TV series. And uh, I mean, from what I understand, the budget. Are you allowed to talk about that? Like, I don't know what the budget is going to be. It's not an expensive show. Well, for you, that could mean, like, I remember you said something about it being $2.5 million per show. Well, Estimated. There, there are two shows that they want me to do for them in Ireland. I, th this other idea, I, I kind of threw a, a, a monkey wrench into the works. They have this other $3.5 million action show that they want me to do with them, and it's, uh, it's ridiculously expensive. And this other show that I prefer doing... I'm kind of jockeying this other show in with them, and um, a, a million an episode. It's a, it's a huge difference between these two projects. Yeah. So we'll see. I have no idea what's going to happen. Well, I'm rooting for you. Thank you. Yeah, it's Thank exciting. Mm -hmm. How soon do you think you'll be starting on those, or you'll know, or? It you know it depends because this other one just you know just showed up it's like you know it's the horse that was way at the back of the pack is now suddenly breaking and wow uh, um they could they could switch right as um, to which one you're going to be doing yeah and i the 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 newer the 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 new one about the two cops is is um um, emotionally uh, challenging and very ambitious thematically. You know, the other one's just like a really fun, you know, action adventure show and um, easy to do. This other one is hard, and I, I, I think I prefer the challenge. I, I, yeah, writing for television became way too easy for me, and um, that's in a those pretty, days, pretty impressive statement considering the fact that you have to just pump out writing for a TV show. Um, TV wasn't as good in those days, you know, the last, the last 10, 15 years. So there's, there's like post-Sopranos television and then there's pre-Sopranos television. And from the Sopranos on, the TV writing just completely surpassed movie writing. And that's where the great stuff is being done now. And that's, that's what got me excited about getting back into it. I, I just couldn't wait to get away from it, from, you know, the shows we were doing in the early 90s. And... Um, and then I was, and I quit the business. I started doing movies, and then I, I ran away to Europe, and you know, you know, just like, and then all of a sudden I'm looking at all this TV stuff, and going, geez, this stuff is great. I think I, you know, this, I'm gonna give it another. Yeah, shot. no, it's become, yeah. it's it's really become quite amazing. The shows that are coming out. I mean, yeah. we've got Breaking Bad, which I think is amazing. Great show. Uh, there's so many other shows, but they're just yeah. like, wow, they they're better than going to a movie. Like you'd want to sit at home and just watch them, like one after the other, you know. The so. the, the writing is is really on a, a whole other level. You know, when I was doing those shows, um, I came I, before I did Jump Street. I did a show called Wise Guy, which everybody says all you know, is kind of the the godfather of all the shows like The Sopranos because we we're the first show that did a very appealing bad guy, and it was like this undercover guy who goes he goes undercover in these big arcs. Um, with with uh, and Kevin Spacey was the second bad guy, but the first bad guy was Ray Sharkey, and there's this um, the movie Donnie Brasco is exactly what uh, what that arc was on Wise Guy, um, a really close relationship between an undercover cop and a hood, and when um, when uh, I finished my run on Wise Guy and Jump Street, everybody in town was kind of oh, what do you want to do? And I was I was just saying let me do a show about a bad guy, 
And, you know, none of these shows were on the air. And everybody, oh, no, you can't do a show about a bad guy. And, and I, was, I was pitching. Why were they wrong? <laughs> and I was just like, guys, TV is going to be dark. You know, so, oh, do you know, and they used to call me Dark Man, and which is kind of ironic that now I, I mostly write comic things. Um, but in those days, I, I really felt that everything was going to darken up, but I, I could not get anybody to listen to me. It was just So I did pilots. You were definitely ahead of the curve. It, I've just... I'd, I'd seen that we had done this great thing on Wise Guy with the bad guy. And when I went to Stephen, who created the show, Stephen J. Cannell, and I said, you know, Stephen, let's, let's do a show about a bad guy. Like, we just had a huge success with this bad guy. And it was like, I, I might have been some speaking like, you know, Urdu. <laughs> was, you can't do a show about a bad guy. Yeah, we, we just did it, man. We just did it. Come on, let's just push it to the next level. And... I just, and again, me not being able to make those kind of alliances where I could go and get somebody to take that kind of chance. So that, so, so I quit doing it, and I, I split for 10 years, and then I come back, and it's just like, wow, it's like a wonderland of this amazing writing for all these insanely dark, sh shows are too dark now, but, but uh, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like, uh, I, I'd, I'd like to see some, some, some light touch somewhere. But, um, you know, it, it, the business tends to, you know, imitate itself, you know, mm -hmm. so everybody starts doing all the same stuff, you know. So, you know, it was really funny because I was doing the Bible for That's the action so show. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the, the German buyers were like, you must make this darker. And I was like, am I really hearing this all these years later? I must make this darker? Uh, strange. It's a strange business. It's a big pendulum swing from the like eh, stuff in the '90s and things like that. Well, you know, TV had never been dark, and the movies really, you know, the '60s had like you know were experimental. The '70s were you know, a little weird and dark, but really, it's always been kind of the, the showbiz philosophy was you know keep it light and snappy, and you know every, keep everybody. And especially television had always been. Like, Thanks for watching our show with Eric Blakeney on The Red Booth. I really wanted to put a deck on my house. The floor was creaking and there were cracks in the wall. I had them put in walls in my basement. Well, the whole thing was done on time, on budget, and not a day of work was missed. Alpha Structural is a top-rate company. I'd recommend them to anybody. If you live in a hillside home and gravity is pulling you towards the edge of the cliff, I recommend you call Alpha. It was a real pleasure to work with Alpha.